Book Five of the Republic, Glaucon and Adamantus join forces with Polymarchus and Thrasymachus to press Socrates into more fully explaining family life in the ideal state. Socrates begins with a surprising assertion. In the ideal state, men and women will be reared and trained on an equal basis and regarded on an equal plane. Both men and women potentially have the talents and temperament suitable for the class of guardians. Socrates next proposes guardians in the ideal state should hold their wives and children in common. The detailed recommendations for implementing this plan are all directed toward ensuring the unity of the state, including procreation festivals, age spans for childbearing, pairings of males and females by lot, and rules to avoid incest, among other details. Socrates' objective is to eliminate any possibility of conflict within citizens. To avoid a division of loyalty between state and family, parents should not be able to identify their own biological children, and vice versa. After some comments by Socrates on warfare and slavery in the ideal states, Glaucon wonders, is the establishment of such a city remotely possible? Socrates responds by upholding the ideal of models and the goal of perfection. Hey, artists are entitled to envision and delineate perfection, whether or not a perfect specimen of anything or anyone can actually exist. On that note, it's possible to specify the conditions that would most likely favor the ideal state's actual coming into existence. This reform is the assignment of power in the state to philosopher kings. Genuine philosophers are lovers of the vision of truth. Only when such persons hold the reins can the state become truly perfect. Socrates makes a number of extremely controversial claims, as judged by the standards of both his time and today. Readers must be cautious in applying modern criteria to the discussion. For example, it would be a big mistake to conclude Socrates' comments on the equal potential of women and men as guardians imply an objective approach to the sexes. However unusual by Athenian social standards of the 5th century BCE, Socrates' approach is still tinged with the contextual sexism of his time and place.